Hey everyone, welcome back to the Work and Dirt channel. In this video, we get after pouring a concrete foundation for Jeremy and Linnell's water filtration system shed, as you can see right here. And this is not gonna be a how to pour concrete video. I think there's plenty of those out there on YouTube. It's gonna be more of a uh, motivation, inspiration kind of concrete video. So if you need some of that, stick around. Whenever you do concrete foundations, you end up using three quarter crushed rock for most of them. And that's to prep the surface before you pour. And in this case, yes, you're looking at a finished foundation, but I'm showing it, showing you it because we wanted to make our foundation a little higher. What was here before was just a little three inch slab that was broken and sliding downhill just wasn't good. And so, Jeremy went to Lowe's and got a third of a yard of crushed rock for 30 bucks, which is a great deal. So we wanted to see if the tractor could pull it out of the truck and uh, that's what you're gonna see next. All right, it's not too dark and it's not too cold. We got Jerrycane over here and today's uh, random task is going to be using these forks to lift this, uh, they say 1100 pound of three quarter crushed rock. I think it I don't know, this one I think might have just been a half cubic yard. Half, half, a, half a yard then, half a yard, okay. So, with these tractors as you know, they rate the lift capacity. This one's 2200 pounds, but that's usually at the pin with no attachment. So if you had all the weight right here on this corner, that's what it can lift. So, this thing weighs with the forks probably 250. And then if we have, we're gonna try to pick up the bag as close as possible here so one foot out that's probably lifting capacity of like 1700 pounds so it should lift it okay but uh all right is nine cubic feet so that, that's, that's that's about half a yard right I uh guess well not five, three five. times three nine twenty seven so it's a third of a yard oh it's a third of a yard oh there four foot is a little big how close am i to the glass you got about a foot and a half oh, yeah. all right and that should be good See what happens. You want me to put down the tailgate? Uh, I don't want you to get under it. Okay. You're, you're clear. Oh, look at that. The Branson's doing work. Yep. Hey, no, the red rock dog. <laughs> I was worried. We've we've lifted some pretty heavy logs at this, and they kind of they took the balance. It, it lifted the tractor, but I guess this is good. I guess those logs we were lifting were heavier than this. Nice. So we're putting in a foundation for the shed right here for our water filtration system. And having the rock that close is much nicer. Any closer and I'd have to give you a glass of wine with that. <laughs> Look at a little update on our nice shed here. Pallet shed. Pretty cool. We can just finish that. We might add a little something to hold all these rakes and whatnot. And shovels, picks, a little shelf for some irrigation stuff and then we'll drop a tarp over it that's so we don't have all that stuff it was normally inside and then i was going to put it under the eave but i don't want to move things twice because when we when we start working on the house i just want nothing in our way so we can just rock on through i'm getting some concrete finishing tools right now so that we can finish making a little pad concrete pad for jeremy's uh water house well pick a project and start working on it because it's good for the soul and uh, there's no reward better than seeing what your hands create. So we've got our bucket of trowels. We're gonna go use this to go do some concrete work. We're checking on Jeremy's form work here, which he did an excellent job for his first time. Nice, he's a, he's a good listener. Um, 
we had some leftover rebar on the property which we used and um leftover tie wire leftover oh yeah even tie wire wow yeah we're those from the berry bushes at the last house <laughs> oh yeah okay well shoot nothing goes to waste here and uh, we opted to have a slightly bigger little mm -hmm. foundation for our um, watershed whatever you want to call it to house this filtration system as you can see we have pretty well water nice nice and earthy mm -hmm. uh, but it's doing its job and he has a nice ultraviolet light to kill any micro uh, micro bacteria contaminants viruses yeah. or anything like that that's rated for a commercial so from blue onyx it's yeah rated for up to 24 gallons per minute and we only probably we have it set way less eight than gallons per minute maybe yeah so yeah. that's <laughs> yeah. just in case yeah so <laughs> We've been protecting it with the tarp from the sun and whatnot, and so now we're ready to put back that shelter and we'll doctor it up later. But but we want to get it put on a nice concrete slab here. So uh, instead of just doing a little four inch um, slab, uh, we wanted to make it a little more stout because the other one was actually falling away from the house and sliding downhill. So this will be pretty well connected. And which reminds me, Jeremy, we should still, um, drill in a couple pieces of rebar into your foundation so we can tie it into your foundation so I'll, I'll get the drill for that and then we'll start mixing all that concrete and uh get rocking you ready to lift weights oh yeah all right <laughs> you're watching the efficient way to mix concrete by hand using five gallon buckets and so uh i've done like fence posts and stuff uh -huh. or is it about the same consistency uh, or do you need this to be more liquidy so it settles? No, no, no. You don't want it liquidy. There's, there's different what they call slumps or viscosities. The slump test is when they pour the concrete out in a special cone shape they have, and based on when they pull the cone off, how much it slumps oh. is what is engineered, specified for that application. Oh. So, but I know just by eye, and, and we're not holding a super heavy. This is not. I mean, this is baby stuff here. Maybe like 700 pounds at the most. Yeah, yeah. So this is nothing crazy and this concrete's 3,000. We're going to make it to a nice, a, a general uh, slump that is good for most random projects. Um, you'll see. Okay. Because um, as you know, if you add water, then you you risk the strength of it. And if you too little, then it's hard to work with and then that's not good either. But in times so where why does why does adding water make the strength bad? Because the rock settles to the bottom? Or? Uh, it's no, it's because the ratio of the lime to crystallize with the 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 whole chemical reaction. Too much water, it slow. It you want a good cure rate, but if you have too much water, it just can't cure the way it needs to. Oh. So it's a it's a good ratio. But that's where experience and specifications are required by when you have a hot day. Um, and it's evaporating, you might compensate a little for that because there's a lot during the whole pour process, depending on how big your job is, you mm. might go a little more oh, on the soupy side. Soupy in the beginning and close, closer Correct. to the electric, you're doing a huge Yeah, job. they'll change. I mean, my dad being an iron worker has done projects where, yeah, the, the, the requirement has changes throughout the day a little bit on what they get and the consistency it needs to be brought in at from the trucks oh. or pumped. Um, but in our situation too, we have a nice, uh, cool climate right now the ground is moist and we added plastic so the the ground is not going to suck the moisture out of the concrete because mm -hmm. usually you're required to spray a little water but that rock we put in here is already moist mm -hmm. and we have plastic so we're not worried about massive evaporation from the so first you need a nice strong drill on a, that has a low gear on it very strong you want like 600 rpm three to six hundred all right, let's go ahead and add some more. Uh, Water or uh, concrete? Concrete, yeah. Keep your back straight. We don't need two soldiers down. <laughs> Nelly soldier, her sciatic nerve is down for the accountant side, so we're down to one. Jerry came. Yeah, we moved the boat and lifted it, and she just walking backwards messed up her back. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. So this ain't a how-to, but this is 
uh, just a little of what I, I usually do. No, 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 I'm showing them right now. This is a good whip. You see it's kind of keeping some shape and it's not melting down to a soup. This is actually a touch on the wetter side. I can actually make it a tad drier. But again, this application will be fine with that. So a touch drier is probably preferred, but this is definitely unacceptable right now. So we're gonna pour now. It takes a second. It doesn't even take long to mix up. Yeah, and don't and don't keep that back corner too high because we'll add some at the very end so that we can smooth it out with the rest. Yeah, Just keep it about an inch down. There you go. Calculating the volume is always tricky, especially when you have footers, and I didn't take the time, I'll admit, to get the perfect volumetric amount that's needed. Um, I did a rough count based on a four inch slab, and then uh, I was obviously thicker than that in the uh, footers, and I estimated wrong. So he is going to get just a couple more bags to fill that area. So in the meantime, I'm gonna just start finishing the back and uh, make use of time. So, so actually not that um, bad and the store is really close so we just did a screed now we'll do a little hand trolley but we're gonna wait for a little evaporation and then continue to work it every half hour so, not bad for your first slab. Yeah, dog. Ready for a whole house? No. Oh. Well, look at there. Jeremy did the uh, first finishing pass. We'll do one more to get rid of some of those lines, but not bad for his first slab. Looking real good. We'll break the forms off in a day or two, and then uh, get ready to put that she shed of a house filter housing, whatever, back on there. Now, I can get back to cleaning out our house. Now, it looks like all Jeremy has left to do is give this little building a nice pressure wash, a little sanding, a little paint, but most importantly, he needs to uh, drill the holes out in the base plate to install some concrete anchors to secure the shelter to the slab. And then, should be done. And hopefully, the one thing you guys get out of this video is the fact that you can use a drill for a concrete mixer instead of a shovel and a pan which you could still use those but i find the the drill is really easy and if you do use one make sure it, you put it on the low setting for more torque and make sure it's like an 18 volt drill so it has plenty of power i probably want to do a project bigger than this with the drill i'd probably go up to a mobile cement mixer um, or beyond that go to of course a concrete truck or a pump truck all right, well, thanks for watching, guys. Your viewership helps our channel support veterans, trails, and charities each quarter. So thank you for that. Until next time, pour some concrete. How you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm sorry your back hurts.